you know, after everything that had happened to me up to this point, I decided that, you know what, enough was enough, and maybe I should try and actually find out about the species that I um, share DNA with now, as well as presumably physical features. Well, I know that, I mean, just, well, you can't see this, but this is audio, but, uh, you know, look at pictures, look at my teeth, my eyes, my whole physical appearance. I mean, I just want to get to know me more, if that kind of makes sense. You know, just who I really am, what makes me tick, and all that sort of mumbo-jumbo stuff. I mean, it is real in the end. Then again, if you can work out what makes you tick, doesn't mean you're going to stop ticking. It's like um, when I was doing a show in uh, Glasgow, there was this, you know, little click through the microphone where it was plugged in and that, and if you happen to, you know, scan that cable, not that cable at all, it would just make this loud clicking noise that would distort throughout the speakers, and it was just really irritating. It was just like, why didn't you fix it? Or replace the cable or the equipment, just like, well, we don't have time or the money to do that. Just be careful of the cable. Just like, it's a 30-foot-long fucking cable that's going all the way around the fucking stage. What am I supposed to do? I like to place my hands on either the microphone or on the mic stand. I mean, I don't know, just... It's, it's, a, it's just like a thing where, just like, I, I need my hands to be able to do something, which is probably why I talk with my hands, or if I'm just playing with something, like, sat at a desk, I'm playing with the pen, I'm unscrewing the end cap of it in that, and just pulling it apart and then pulling it back together, just because to keep myself occupied. Because sheer boredom is the worst thing on Earth. And, well, the universe, probably. Heck, if I'm sat in a ditch, bleeding out, dying, at least I'm doing something. I have some experience. And that, I mean, wouldn't you rather feel pain than feel nothing at all? Difficult question, I know, but still. So I just said, you know, I've got to keep my hands occupied with something. And it's just like, think, 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 what should I do? What should I use, you know, keep my hands occupied? I mean, obviously I could wank on stage, but um, I don't think they would appreciate that, especially with children out there. And it hit me. Oasis. The singer of Oasis. Oh, I always forget his name, but, you know, he had a tambourine and that. And to be honest, tambourines. He's just using that and that just because he's simply bored, isn't he? So that's why I just grabbed a tambourine and just uh, whacked it a few times throughout. Just to keep my hands occupied. And people may say, you know, that's just counterproductive and that. It'll keep, if you don't, you know, have your hands fiddling about with something, then you're more focused. Well, actually, no, not really, because when my hands aren't busy just doing off something all on their own and that, then there's nothing I can focus on other than my arms and that being, but I just need to play with something or just fiddle with something or, you know, just gesture them around a bit. It's just, otherwise, there's nothing else I can think about in my head. I mean, I do feel the pain like just subconsciously it's just a subconscious thing that just happens to me and it's something i have no control over just like many other things in my life that i don't have control over and i don't know what to do about it <sighs> well, you know never mind never mind <laughs> it doesn't matter no, it doesn't matter <sighs> anyway um right you know what, I'm going to tell you about something that has uh, recently happened to me. In fact, so recent that uh, it's still technically happening right now. But, you know, I'll let you, I'll get you caught up in that. But, uh, you know, best set it up first. Uh, so basically, you know, well, sleeping, me, Billy and Tom, you know, just actually having a relaxing sleep. I mean, our relationship, you know, isn't back to normal yet and that. But, you know, it's been about a week and not a lot's happened in that week, to be honest. I mean, we went out um, to this, like, um, I don't know, help centre f- thing where uh, people who can't really speak or have trouble speaking um, and want to ask questions to people that they respect, I don't know, it was some convention thing. Basically, I was there to basically interpret what they said and say 
whatever they wanted to say. I don't know why I specifically needed to be there. I mean, I wasn't mimicking their voices. I was just using my own. I mean, they could barely speak, so they could only write down what they wanted to say. Again, I don't know why I was there. Why was that necessary? Makes no sense. But anyway, we get woken up, you know, by a huge shake. The whole, like, beast just shakes and so And, you know, obviously, when you're on land and that's on Earth and that, that's pan up. But when you're in space, it's like, shit, is the thing going to crash? It's going to crash. It's going to crash. It's going to crash. I know it's going to crash. It's going to crash. Isn't it? It's going to crash. We're going to die. We're going to die. We're going to die. And then there's that one person getting smug in the corner who hates flying or hates, you know, being a space. It's like, I knew this was going to happen. You happily die, you bastard, just to be right. <laughs> but hey, you weren't right on this occasion, were you? As a massive split beam of light we could see from our window. It's a massive, like, split beam of light in space. Deep and light purples and lilacs. With white and orange light in the centre. With these sort of white and yellowy orangey waves just coming out of it. This shit had just gotten real. There was an emergency announcement for all of us to head to the bridge immediately. Unless you were an engineer, in which case you were instructed to go down to the engine to check that everything was in maintenance and everything was okay. We were just got panicked and just like, did you want to do it ourselves? I mean, we just like, so, sort of, I mean, Tom just like bumped into each other, just like, should we grab our suits? Do we need our spacesuits? What we need? And like, should we bring anything? Should we just leave everything here? Is this an evacuation? What the hell's happening? There's just like a load of fluster everywhere. Everyone's just sort of dashing about in there. And it showed the unorganized nature of USP. It's just like everything was completely chaotic at the time. And no one knew exactly what to do. So fumbling and that we just sort of grabbed ourselves together and made our way to the bridge. However, before we got there, Commander Smack stopped us in our tracks. Look, look, uh, Commander, just, just, we're not type this, you know, in discipline is not on that leg, we just need to get to the bridge and I mean, so do you, come on, let's go. He told us that all unessential staff were not needed, and that we should board one of the escape crafts immediately. I was thinking of protesting, but then I wasn't thinking of arguing, because considering that we could be crashing, who knows, we didn't know what the engines were, were like and that, so, yeah, not wanting to argue, but decided not to argue because, uh, you know, we were all keen on living. So we made our way through a sea of employees, because bashing against each and every one, everything... One was just sort of clustering everywhere. Nothing made sense anymore. Heck, we weren't even 100% sure of where we were going. We kept getting pushed back by the, all these people hiding in the opposite direction of us. It's like, we need to get through, Godfrey. We need to get through. We need to get through. That's just what Tom just kept saying. We need to get through. We need to get through. We need to get out here now. Just do what our commander says. Just do what he says, you know. But being in trouble as it is before, just like, we'll do it. We'll do it. I know, I know, Tom, I know, I know, I know. It's just like, what can I think, 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 think? What are we going through? So I decided to do the only logical thing possible. I imitated a siren. Not exactly a vocal, but uh, I did someone, I imagined someone doing an imitation of that, and to be honest, it was close enough, and it was enough to sort of stop people in their tracks enough for us to just skimmy through them. Eventually, we boarded an escape craft, or escape pod, or escape ship, I don't know. All it said was, escape this way. What did it say, emergency exit? I don't know. To be honest, uh, I don't think you're going to bother look reading at the signs and that when uh, you're just running for your life. Or you think you're running for your life, you're not really sure in the end. But regardless, we boarded, and Tom stopped. I asked him, what's the matter, come on, we gotta go, we gotta go, you know, you were the one saying, you gotta do what command says, come on, we gotta go, what is the hold up right now? And Tom just looks at me and says, these controls and that, they're different, they're different from the others, I'm being taught how to use these ones. So improvise then, I said. But Tom was straight back with, if I improvise, I could blow us up, we could crash, who knows? Oddly enough, Billy was the one to come up with a sensible suggestion. 
Why not read the on book manual? Both me and Tom just looked in amazement and said, In unison, there's a manual? Billy came back with, Yeah. Did none of you read the handbooks and that we were given? I replied with, Well, mm, skimmed it. And Tom replied with, Well, I just wanted to take a bit of a more tour around the place so I could get to know things a lot better. And Billy, with a humph, said, Well, if you bother to look, you ignore that there's manuals for each and every type of ship or shuttlecraft or anything on the actual ship. They're included in a little box right about here. And as we're both amazed, he actually pulled out a manual. Again, physical paper copy. Don't know why they use that. All three of us looked at the manual, and rather than being written in words, presumably because obviously there'd be lost in translation between the different languages that people spoke there, I didn't really know. I only ever heard people speaking English. Maybe there was others. I don't know. I wasn't really interested. Sounds selfish, I know, but uh, Hank really got a very high impression of USP, really. Hmm, wonder why that is. But anyway, the diagram looks simple enough to follow. I mean, it reminded me of stuff like you're getting Lego sex or stuff from Ikea and that. I mean, stuff that's so bloody obvious and so simple. Like, you just think, how is anyone not able to make this thing? And then sometimes they make things a bit confusing by changing the angle or the orientation of the diagram from one page to the next. So you're just a bit confused. And sometimes if something is in colour and some things are in black and white, it's just like, oh, you know, consistency would help. It helps everyone. Just keep consistency out. Though it isn't bad to have a bit of a writing, maybe a bit of a shocker every now and then, but not in fucking instructions, eh? Hmm? Instructions should be basic, consistent, and above all, easy to follow. Yeah, yeah. So any company who's fucking vague on their instructions and that, or flat out doesn't include any, or says, oh, go to this website and that, to go and find the fucking instruction, just like, put the fucking instructions in there. Listen, if you don't need the instructions, fine, fair enough, but some people might. So just put the fucking instructions in the box, make it easy enough, and also, you don't have to put it in a billion one different languages. Just, you know, <sighs> just settle on something. I mean, for example, okay, I know this may sound a bit controversial, but weird, but listen, listen. If you live in a country and, like, that isn't, you know, you're not on a visa or anything. you like, like, you've lived there. You've permanently lived there. Or you've lived there for at least a good few years. Say at least, I don't know, two, three years and onwards and that. And you still do not know the native tongue by that point. Just say, like, you know, there's something wrong wrong with you and you really shouldn't be living there. By that point, I mean, unless it's not your choice and that, but if you choose to go somewhere and live there and, you know, you don't speak the native tongue, you know, I mean, it's majority rules, isn't it? It's just the majority rules at the end of the day. It's democracy. Whatever the people want, you know, whatever the majority wants. The majority gets, even if that's a good thing or a bad thing. And believe me, it can be bad things. Because some people are fucking idiots. You know, I really do go on tangents about things. Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe I'm getting it all out of my system. Or maybe it's just because I'm trying to irritate myself. Slight frustrations and that, yeah. Well, maybe more than slight, just... I don't know. It's just, I feel dizzy. I feel tired. I feel numb. I just... I don't know at the minute. I'm talking quickly, just like trying to think of things that could come out and they just come out all at once. It's just like, okay. Just gotta get back on track. Just gotta get back on track. Get back on things. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get back on track. So, anyway, anyway, where was I? Oh, yes. All of us, you know, just looking at this man, looking through it and that, uh, getting the main logistics of it and that. And after about uh, 10 minutes of looking through it, Tom just said, right, I think I've got enough to at least get us going in that, but you do keep looking at that and keep reading it, because if I get confused about something, I'll need to ask you guys. We have nodded and agreed. We shut the door to the escape craft and we were off. 
it was pretty small as escape craft and that. I mean, then again, it is just meant for escape and they're meant to fit as many people as possible in a small number of space. So, yeah. I mean, there was six seats total in there. So, obviously, six people per one. That was nice that there was only three of us in twice the space. I also had a little bit of a nasty feeling in my head that maybe we should have waited to see if anyone else was coming to have this thing filled up. I mean, there was other crafts there, but maybe if there wasn't enough, then again, some people would have to stay on USB's base anyway, so... Uh, I don't know. It was a bit of a nasty thing I got in my head that maybe would have taken some other people's places and that, well, just shipped off with them, basically. But I guess, so, nah. Nah, we, we, we were being told otherwise. Maybe. I don't know, there was... No one else there at the escape bay. It just makes you think maybe they realise how useless and that we were. Or really we're not too useless, maybe. I don't know. Maybe people had gone before us or gone after. Either way, we had to focus on what we were doing now. This exact moment, we had to focus on that. Which was, well, none of us were exactly sure. I mean, all we were talking to was get in there and go, but go where? Go back to Earth? I don't know, just float around in space for a bit? Who knows, but eventually that choice was taken from us anyway. In the distance, we saw a small shuttle. It looked like it had a bit of damage, a bit of battle down to it. There were clearly scratches, scrapes, and a few dents around it. We thought that maybe this ship had been attacked and maybe that they needed help. Or equally maybe the ship had been stolen in a forced attack on the crew of that ship, who knew? Well, we were about to find out. As a tractor beam was thrown out at us, stopping us in our tracks, Tom turned to me and Billy and said, Do we have any boosters? We had to flick through all the pictures and that in the manual books now. And then I suddenly realised... Tom, it is an escape shuttle. I don't think it would have the room for boosters anyway. Besides, maybe we're getting rescued. Tom just scared at me, just like, rescued. We're gonna get rescued, yeah, um, we didn't need rescuing. Then Billy interrupted us both saying, uh, don't you guys remember about that massive crack in the universe just there? You know, just over there, like sending out some... Waves and that, and the whole ship shook. No, no one remember that, okay. We were so busy arguing with each other, we didn't realise that we'd actually been pulled aboard. And then we scared out, once we realised. Guns pointed at us from every direction. From, I would say, about 18 people. Then the leader, I'm assuming who was the leader of this group, stepped out. He was about 5 foot 2, and his skin was a mixture of black and purple. He had lizard-like eyes. I seemed to just scan the whole room. He was wearing a spacesuit without a helmet. However, his spacesuit was made of patchwork of different spacesuits and different items of clothing that all just skitched together. He then finally addressed us. Step out of your ship or you will die. Um, me, Billy and Tom just obliged. We somehow didn't feel in the mood for arguing. Either with each other or with anyone else at the minute. Your people are exactly what we are looking for. Really, I said, that seems oddly specific. You were looking for two human oigs, you know, who look human. And then you were looking for a more anthropomorphic cat sort of person. With the natural abilities to mimic any vocals like he chooses. Yep. Well, I guess it's your lucky day then. You will remain silent. Or I will sleep. Eeks and every hair from your body. You know, oddly enough, that's not the first time I've been threatened, Max. What my friend is trying to say, Tom interrupted, is that we have nothing against you and that, and we will try and help you in any way we can. Won't we, Donfrey? Me and Billy both nodded, just saying, yes, yep, whatever you want, you got it, you got it. The reason I made humour at the situation is because... Well, if you try and make a laugh out of something and that, then it just doesn't seem as scary anymore and makes you feel less tense and you, you feel like you're less likely to say or do something wrong or something stupid 
Although really it might actually have the uh, complete opposite effect. So, I said, who do I um, have the uh, honour of addressing? I smiled sort of half hesitantly and half genuinely at him. You mentioned them being humanoid. Humans hmm? from Earth. Um, now let me see, Soul 3. Uh, to describe us um, in a way that you would understand, I guess you could call us space pilots. That isn't 100% accurate to what we do, but uh, it is the simplest way for you to understand. And as for my name, I will not divulge that information to you. And since you, Mr. Donfrey, are so eager to talk, then perhaps you'd like to put your money where your mouth is. So, listen, this is what is going to happen. I have discovered that that there is a crack in space through time. If I manage to find a safe way through, then I will be able to get leeches from either the past or the future. The problem is, we don't know if the route that we have calculated is safe or not. Do you get the picture? I awkwardly smiled, raising my cheeks up at him which then evolved into a more toothy sort of grin. I will allow you access back to your craft, if, and only if, you complete this journey set out for you here, just to make sure it is safe to go through. And your friends will remain here. Do not worry, they will be perfectly safe. As long as you do not deviate from this route. Or try and summon assistance. As we speak, my colleagues are removing any communications that they can find and also placing coordinates. All you have to do is just sit there while the autopilot takes you to where I wish you to go. If you make it through the clock, great. Just press this button here. Come on, it's all right. This button here. And it will take you back. And then, I'll let you go. All three of you. That simple. But, if you deceive me, you and your friends will die in agony. I gulped and replied with, and, um, what if I happen to die? You have two friends. Two more chances to get it right. <laughs> <laughs> now go. Tom then sprang ran up to me. No, Donfrey, Donfrey, you can't fly this thing. You've never thought what about this. Come on, I'm the one who's the pilot, not you. I turned back to Tom and said, I read the manual. I think I've got the hang of it. But, and listen, I'd rather risk my life. Call it, I don't know, a sense of fairness and stuff, but you obviously know why. Your arm. Besides, Tom, hopefully I'll be fine. Hopefully, I shut the door to the escape craft. I then fastened myself in the pilot's seat. Then, the same tractor beam that had pulled us into this ship was now pushing me back out, as close to the cracking space that it could. Then, I just pressed a button and the autopilot took over. I made sure that I was familiar with the controls, just in case the autopilot failed. And also, you know, it's a good thing to know about, isn't it? I was set on course, approaching the crack. The white and orange lights were beaming out as the purple and indigos of the cracks around it began to form. 
Luckily I'd packed my shades before we went off on the slow journey and put them on. Good job I did, because it probably wouldn't be very good for my eyes, considering that even when I did have them on, with that tinted glass, I could still see bright beaming light at my eyes that was hurting. It was amazing how fast I was going. I was getting closer and closer to the crank, approaching. Then, finally, the escape craft touched it. And that's when all hell broke loose. I got a warning that the autopilot was failing. The lights within the ship kept flickering on and off. The ship was shaking, crackling. I didn't know what I'd do. Should I get up and see what's going on? Or should I just stay seated? I, I just didn't know. I mean, this was an escape pod. You can't escape from an escape pod because why it's an escape pod. All I could do was just hold on and hope for the best. Now the whole ship was shaking and spinning round at the same time. I thought if I vomit, I would make a nice, neat coating around the entire sh inside of the ship. Oh dear, was not feeling too good at this point. Then, suddenly the whole ship stopped. After silence. The engine had stopped running, all the lights had stopped working. The oxygen meter was barely functioning. And well, here I am. Just sitting in silence. Just slowly, slowly drifting. Well, that's nice, isn't it? What? Sorry, sorry for interrupting you. Uh, I'm sure it was very important. Would have interrupted earlier, but I did want to know how you got here. Or how I got here, in fact. Oh, God. It can't be. So, uh, anyway, my um, furry friend, uh, I'm Don Free Doncaster. Who the hell are you?